Welcome back to Leafy Life. I'm Susie and this channel is my space to share my love of houseplants. Today's video is footage that was all filmed back in November. We are coming towards the end of January now and um, I've been wanting to share this with you for ages. I couldn't share it with you when it was first filmed because I had a little queue of things to share with you at the time. So I've been saving it for a rainy day, um, quite literally, because it is damp and grey and cool outside so I'm enjoying being cosy indoors with blankets and tea and toast as usual <laughs> um, so I hope you enjoy the video and I'll be back with something fresh to film next week in this house I am tending to leafy life reaching Um, for me right now it's a Friday morning and the kids are at school and it started out really beautifully sunny and now it's gone kind of cloudy and it's blustery but we're in the midst of November loveliness there are still leaves on the trees and I'm driving along some country lanes today to get to a very special place um, I am going in hunt of wild sundews a gorgeous drive i have absolutely loved those lanes love a good lane drive um yeah i'm here and gonna start exploring this site is home to some native sundews which is really exciting but we realized pretty quickly that this was the wrong time of year to be looking for them they'd all died back for the winter and there were no visible signs However, there was a different type of native carnivorous plant that was still visible, um, and so we went looking for that instead. And this is the place, this is where we're going to go looking. So, it's quite wet in this field, so I've come prepared. So Richard, can you tell me a bit about what Wildside does here? Yes, um, we, uh, we welcome mostly primary school age uh, children for residentials and birthday parties and that kind of thing. Um, we've got a, a setup which you can't quite see from here, but it's down in the field. I'll put so. some pictures in. Okay, with a barn and um, 
We're going to zip around the woods over there as well. Okay. But uh, we've just got a lovely environment. Yeah. Um, it's so lovely for children to have a bit of space and freedom. Yeah. Uh, to run around and play. Amazing. And we well as well. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a bit about what we do. Wonderful. And can you tell me a bit about the actual um, natural environment you've got surrounding you? So this, this particular yeah, meadow. Yeah, we're very fortunate. We've got um, a mix of woodland. We've got some wet woodland over there. We've got some dry woodland further down. Um, we've got this species-rich mire here um, with exciting um, flora and fauna. Yeah. Um, We've got the fields, we've got the river, so okay. lots of different habitats. Yeah. And we've got an orienteer set up across the ground as well. Amazing. And and the pony, you said you've got ponies here, and we they got, influence um, this environment as well. Yeah, we've got some miniature Shetland ponies in the other field, and um, in fact, one of them is expecting a foal. Oh, lovely. Uh, next year. Oh, um, magic. Ex more ponies grazing this field. Okay. And that's important because it keeps the scrub down. Yeah. And it, um, with their feet, they sort of make little holes in the ground where plants can grow as well. Yeah, I can see a bit of a little wet puddle there. Yeah, <laughs> it's part of the grazing um, yeah. cycle we have here. Yeah, amazing, thank you. This photo shows the ground beneath our feet and if you know this family of plants you will know what you're looking at. They are teeny tiny little butterworts also known as pinguicula and you'll have seen different types of pinguicula in um, online shops and in various garden centres maybe um, but these are our own native British little ones and they are very cute. I was delighted to discover these and see them in the wild. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start pointing them out to you and you can have a good close look at them. But that's the butterfly there. You oh, see. lovely. They're so cute. Mm. So I've walked up from the base there where I've parked um, through a lovely field and then up into this amazing, lovely kind of boggy meadow. <laughs> um, and yeah, where it's wetter, these little puddles and where the ponies have been stamping out little little nooks there's a butterwort and there's another one it's got some looks like new growth coming despite being November <laughs> so I first came here quite a few years ago probably at least seven or eight years ago um, because I found out that my old science teacher <coughs> had raft spiders on his land um, because he came to the library that I worked in and he had like a photo album of um, just things he'd spotted on his land, things he'd been encountering here and one of them was a raft spider and I, I knew that my husband was really into into those and had never seen them before so we came out hunting for them and, and um, yeah we were in this exact same field looking, traipsing around for raft spiders and we held them and they were beautiful and um, I'll pop a photo in um, but I remember at the time I was a bit uncomfortable about the sheer amount of orb weavers that were just surrounding me and after a while of looking at our spiders I was kind of happy to to finish but Andy was still really really keen to to find some more so he was sort of looking around and mooching around this whole field and and I just paused for a minute and stopped and looked around me and I realized that on all sides of me there were webs about sort of uh, sort of stomach height <laughs> of orb weavers, orb weavers with their spiders on and I just felt so surrounded that I got the chills I'm not scared of spiders but I just don't like them on me I mean I think they're amazing and clever and beautiful and very useful but I just don't like them being on me because I feel like I'm going to lose track of it and I don't want them to get squished on me and things like that and I just properly got the chills so I just froze and stood there and I was like okay Andy I'm not moving I'm just gonna stay here and not move and then when when he was ready we just traipsed off together but yeah I have very happy memories of this lovely field um can't actually see any webs at the moment I wonder if it's getting a bit late in the year and they're starting to I don't know do they hibernate I don't know but um I can't see any right now but I did just see a bit of a web um down low in the grass rather than stretched across um between the grass strands that there, there are some little webs down low in the grass so I'm gonna have a look at those just peering into the puddles there you go you can see just down in here just try and get level with it a bit there we go you can see all that webbing so I'm wondering if there's a raft spider living in there somewhere don't want to disturb it but it would be amazing to see it 
Just spotted another butterwet hiding right in here. There we go. Oops, that's my bottle falling out of my pack. Really, really loving it here. It's such a treat and a privilege to just hang out in this in this field. <sighs> it's just good to be, to be still and be quiet and listen to these just gentle, soft sounds around me, like the trees swishing, the few leaves that are still on the on the trees around me, just gently blowing in the breeze and yeah, I just heard a little aeroplane going over. I'm far away from any villages or towns and the roads around here are just little narrow lanes. There was a buzzard flying over just now and Richard pointed out some little siskin in the trees. I'm not very good at matching um, bird names to their sounds but it's really lovely to be surrounded by bird sounds around here. Just lots of different tweetings and twitterings, different calls and songs and it's just a very lovely peaceful place to be. I'm just crouching and resting my bottom on some damp reeds <laughs> but I'm pretty comfy and actually relatively cosy it's just very nice here there's just a, a lot of there are so many different plants at my feet so many different leaf shapes they're very beautiful and I would like to know them all by name eventually <laughs> I think I can feel water seeping into my boots. I think they may have finally sprung a leak. They're so cute. So um, Richard has very kindly suggested that I could take one home and see if it will grow at home as a little little tiny baby house plant. Um, I was telling him about our sundew that we've rescued and and my son's fascination with with carnivorous plants and. Um, yeah, he suggested that I could dig one up and take it home, so I'm going to do that in a minute. Um, it's very sludgy around here. I don't have a pot, but I've got, um, I might have something back in the car I can keep it in to get home. It's about a half hour drive, so um, yeah, I want to keep it happy. Um, it's going to be hard to choose because they're all so adorable. When you get in really close, you can see how pearly they are, how pearly and succulent the leaves are, and how reflective they are and you can see the very very delicate veining and these little hairs i couldn't tell from a distance how how hairy they are down into the stems as they get down into the ground i think you can see that that one's caught a little something unless it's a particle of dirt i'm just gonna have to try and point my fingers are so massive compared to these little tiny plants but yeah, they, they catch really, really tiny little flies, obviously, rather than massive, massive blue bottles and things like that. They're so cute. I don't know if everyone feels the same way as I do, but I just find all of this so beautiful. These brown leaves, the droplets, the muddy puddles and the reflections of the sky, the grass stems just turning to yellow and brown. Obviously, this is the natural world and we wouldn't want to just go out into random um, wild fenland and dig up native plants to take home. Um, and I wouldn't do that. But this is this is private land and it's it's um it's an invitation for a very small <laughs> amount to take. So I've been looking at this little butterwort here and I just realised that there's one tucked away 
just in there as well and under here as well it's like real treasure I'm trying to just unravel it a little bit through all this grass just yeah really really tucked away in there there we go <laughs> that one's kind of star shaped There we go, it's all uncovered. Yeah, seeing the light of day. <laughs> I keep finding more. They're just really hidden sometimes. There. And look at this one just forming. Look at that. <laughs> So perfect and tiny. Here's another little puddly patch and look, there's one, very perfect. And there's one. I'm just walking back down the field to get to the car. I'm pretty chilly and I thought I'd show you as I go the facilities down here for people to come and stay. Um, school visits and group visits and children's parties. <laughs> These are the facilities. Uh, hot showers and nice toilets and that's where the yurts can be set up over on the flat ground there. Um, apparently they serve yummy curries and yeah, well, it's great. There's a kitchen over on the right hand side that you can just about see as I'm getting closer gonna come down these steps <clears throat> there you go you can see it's really well set up mm, I'm very grateful for the warmth of my car right now I've just been warming up changing my boots and um, getting my hands clean and yeah just kind of like getting comfy and um, I have a potato um, as you do. Um, <laughs> I get hungry a lot uh, when I'm out and about so I've always got snacks with me and uh, this was dinner last night. We have a leftover one. It's a lot of good carbs filling and cheap and tasty <laughs> and easy to cart around with me. So yeah, I have a potato. So I'm just, um, yeah, just kind of like thawing out. I actually got colder than I thought. My fingers were like going a bit numb and it certainly feels nice to be back in my car. I have loved being out in nature and um, yeah, kind of a bit wild and just isolated. But um, yeah, it's gonna be nice to get home, maybe do some drawing today and have a cup of tea. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed coming along with me on this journey and exploring and seeing, seeing these lovely treasures in the wild. Um, I'll check in with you later and show you, um, show you things. Um, okay, bye for now. So it might not look like much right now, but this is what I brought home. It's a little pile of wet mud with um, a couple of very cute pinguiculin in there, little butterworts in there, and um, I just brought a little bit of the moist soil with them from the ground so that um, they didn't dry out on the way home. Um, I just happened to have a bowl in the car because I had some snacks with me, so I tipped those out and um, then they were able to stay safely in here on the way home to just um, have a go at creating a little ping pot, a little a little home for my pinguicula, my little native butterworts. Um, so I have this, this bowl and pot, um, they're matching because they came together. It was an Ikea purchase of a lovely little um, kind of bonsai tree, which I don't seem to be able to um, look after. Um, and yeah, it did a massive leaf drop and seemed to be dead. So I thought, oh, this might come in handy for something. And yeah, it's gonna be great because it's shallow. So I'd love to make a little kind of like proper bob, bob, bog garden, a little bog garden at some point, um, an indoor little bog thing. Um, so that might happen at some point soon, but um, 
for now, just to keep these ones alive um, and get them what they need right now. I'm just going to plant this up with some soil and um, yeah, just see how that goes. So this is not a how to because I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just feeling my way forwards in a bit of a hurry. Um, I will explore this whole subject more soon, but I just thought you might like to see what I'm doing and I'm sure you'll have some suggestions on how I could do it better. But right now, pushed for time, I'm just doing it, winging it <laughs> and letting you see what I'm doing. Um, and yeah, as I say, we'll see how it goes. So I've got this shallow pot. I've just bunged in a load of pea gravel. It's probably just more than half full. I want it to be well draining, but not all the way through. So I want it to drain out of the bottom um, but I want to keep the top kind of nice and moist. So, um, I'm not going to be putting in any perlite or any orchid bark at the moment. I'm just going to put in my normal houseplant soil, um, and the little bits of soil that, <laughs> that it came with. Um, you might find some bits of moss as well to stick on because there was, there was moss in and around the pinguiculas where they were growing. Um, so yeah, so basically some gravel, some houseplant soil, the moss and the, the little butterworts on the top. And that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, going to keep this soil nice and moist. And I do have some bits of moss at the ha at the ready, nice and handy. <laughs> um, I had this hanging around for, for doing various terrariums. So I'm just going to lay a kind of a little, a little bit of a carpet of that, but leave some space for planting the butterwort and probably in the middle. I've made a kind of a ring around the edge with um, the moss that I had. Um, I was just choosing bits that would kind of wedge in nicely to to the edge and form a bit of a border. And I'm just going to plant the butterwort and then see whether I can fit in some more moss around that. I'm just going to take out a little bit of the middle bit of soil actually because I make a bit of a dip because I've got um, a bit of the original kind of lovely soil from from wild side there we go looks like i've got a little bit of moss there too so might as well have that so there's one little bit of of butterwort and i'm just gonna look at the uh See what roots we've got. Yeah, very, very little roots. Tiny roots, very short, very sort of hair-like in thickness. I'm just going to give this a little, I was going to say a little rinse. I don't know if it'll like that. I'll plant it as it is, rather mucky because um, a lot of them are quite mucky in situ anyway and um, when I water it with some um, tap water that's sat around for like 24 hours or more um, it will kind of rinse off a bit but they don't really like having their leaves wet so they're meant to be watered from from around their roots rather than sort of all over their leaves so yeah but I mean rain happens doesn't it so just every once in a while, I don't think it would matter too much. I think that one's actually broken. I think that leaf, yeah, it's just come loose. And that one's dying back. I don't know if these will do well or not. Um, I don't know if they'll die back or whether they'll keep going so right you can just about see some roots on this one in amongst all the, the oozy mud there you go there's a bit of root Just using my finger to make a little nook but they're they're quite shallow rooted it seems so yeah they're mostly mostly just going to sit on the surface get some more of that nice slimy gunge in there 
hopefully make them feel a bit more at home. <laughs> that one, that one's got some new growth coming, so, you know, it's hopeful that they might keep, keep on active during the winter, especially now they're inside in the warm. And I'll put them somewhere bright. They are so cute. As I said, I have no experience of this whatsoever. Um, I didn't really plan for this to be happening. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know I was going to be coming home with these. And um, it's very thrilling, but I am pretty clueless and I need to research this more. But this is just going with my gut instinct based on what I know they like. And I can always tweak it, but for now they just need to be somewhere where they won't dry out and not just sitting in a cereal bowl right. sit there happily. just nudging it down into the surface of the the soil really same with that one just not very rooted we'll see how that goes time for an update so back to present time um i wanted to show you uh, how the little butterworts are doing it is now butterwort singular <laughs> um i have been learning a lot um about well i've been learning some about carnivorous plants um since i made that video and i feel like i really didn't know a lot when i first got my first couple of carnivorous plants um I'm still learning and yeah I think you do learn on the job through experience of looking after them and see how they behave for you and see what their needs are um I found that when I accidentally let some carnivorous plants dry out they found it really hard to recover so I'm now being extra careful with that I think one thing that delayed me in watering them sometimes was knowing that they didn't like fresh tap water and initially I was just giving them I was giving them tap water that had been sitting around overnight and then I realised that wasn't good enough either long term. So I started going about trying to um, make sure that I collected enough rainwater um, to always have that in the house for, for topping up their water. Um, so I have this old milk bottle and um, I've written on it that it is rainwater for carnivorous plants so I don't get it mixed up and sort of waste it on something else. Um, and I'm in the process of shifting all my carnivorous plants to one area of the house um, so that I just have a, have an eye on them so that I can't forget them. Um, and yeah, there's a couple that I need to move from other places in the house to make that, um, make that happen. Um, I just want to be consistent with that because I still really love them. I just, I feel like I've really let the plants down um, since, since owning them. And I want to I want to carry on learning and I want to carry on trying to grow them nicely. So, yeah, that's a work in progress. Um, but actually, I'm, I just even yesterday realised that I need to keep them even wetter. I had the lovely Laura from Coon Garden Centre here and we had a lovely time and she kind of just reminded me how wet they need to stay. So um, that is what I am endeavouring to do. Um, but here are the butterworts, the butterwort. So, yeah. <laughs> whoops um let's see if i can show you better without slopping it there we go come down to the level so i don't need to tip it towards you so you can see there's just one but it is looking really healthy really green and full and i'm sure that's new growth i'm sure those little center bits are new um so that's really cool you can see a little remnant of a tiny one there and no sign at all of the other two so um that is purely, I think, down to my, my lack of watering, not realising quite how moist they needed to stay. Um, and yeah, lately I've not been very well with bug after bug and various appointments and dentist stuff. And I know that I've been a bit off the boil with my watering. So that's purely my error, but I, I know better now. and I'm going to be more careful with that. So I have high hopes for this little guy surviving. I mean, he's been here two months already and looking great. So... We'll just keep him full up of water and keep an eye on him so i'll make sure i give you updates as as he goes along and um i might be able to add some other things to this bowl eventually maybe get some other types of pinguicula um or other bog loving plants because it's quite a big bowl for this one tiny little one so yeah sorry that this is wobbling i'll worry about that 
So yeah, here it is. It definitely has got new growth. Those two inner leaves are looking really new. Um, this one might still just about be alive or it might not. It actually looks like that might be a tiny new leaf there. I'll see if I can zoom in any further. There we go. Yeah, that actually looks like this um, this little pointy leaf there is actually alive. Um, so having just had a nice fresh drink, it might might actually recover. I don't know if these leaves around it will recover, but it looks like the plant is alive and should should continue to grow. We'll see. Um, but this actually gives us a really nice view of the, the bigger plant too, if I can just focus. There we go. You can see fairly well little hairs on each leaf. And it's actually looking in really good shape. You can see in the center really well now that fresh new little point leaf right in the middle coming up just vertically there. And the two more rolled leaves on either side of that. This is so happy. I love this. I love this little plant. And um, yeah, just looking back over the video as I, as I was editing it for you just now, it was so lovely to to relive that lovely, lovely time out at Wildside um, and to, to look at those plants again up and close up and to have this little guy surviving. And yeah, I I definitely want to keep learning about about these types of plants more and I'd like to get out um, out there again in the spring maybe or whenever the um, sundews are back up and growing it would be really lovely to see those and show you those in their natural environment um, and yeah just to kind of be on the lookout for that kind of thing generally um, if I'm in the right environment for it to just be looking out for wildflowers and wild plants and all of those little little tiny tiny plants that are just so hidden and low down and um yeah little tiny treasures to be found so i hope this video has been interesting and i hope it might have inspired you to have a go with carnivorous plants um, of some sort or to learn more um or to get out there and get spotting in nature for anything anything wild and lovely out there um especially as spring comes it's it's just around the corner <laughs> soonish um but yeah, thank you for joining me for this video and um, if you've liked it then please give it a thumbs up and please uh, follow and share and comment and ask questions and uh, subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Bye!